Okay, here we go. This is a pet portrait Falco canine German Shepherd canine cop um, colored pencil on drafting film. I am doing the outline in black, polychromos black, so I get a fine sharp point. And I am also testing out a new sharpener. If you notice how long my point is, I'm testing out a new long point sharpener. So if it looks a little different, that's why. I am using my grid method. I always use my grid method when I'm doing pet portraits. So I make sure I have the anatomy correct and everything in all the right places. Really helps me with shading and all those clumps of fur where exactly they begin and end. So I, I, you know, my preference is the grid method. And I'm looking at my iPad, which I'm using the Copy It app with the grid method. So that is what I'm doing here. And I did a sketch with, um, uh, yeah, graphite. So I have a very loose, light sketch with graphite on there. Then I'm going in and with a, like I said, the polychromos black, getting my edges. Jumping here to the eye, um, I'm using a light pressure here, not hard at all. Maybe a little bit for a really fine line there, but um, drafting film doesn't take a ton of layers. So I, the layers that I do, the first layers that I'm doing are very light. Now I'm moving on to a Caran d'Ache Luminance Blue, just because I like the color of this blue, but I ended up not using it very much after. So any light blue for the highlight of the eye will be fine. This is Derwent Lightfast Mars Violet that I used a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot for shading. The reason I really didn't like this luminance is I think because it's so waxy, it just doesn't go on um, the same. So you can see I just erased it. I just, I really just didn't like how it even felt applying it. So I did it just for this area that I think I actually ended up covering up um, or erasing anyway. The um, Mars Violet, again, for is great for the shadows and it kind of gives a, when it's next to dark, like a dark value, it kind of gives a glistening glow of a highlight of black. So that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going for you know, this, this photo is actually taken outside. So there's a lot of sunlight that is in the fur. It's a lot of the color spectrum, the pinks, the reds, the blues from the sky. There's greens from the grass that he's in and the greens from outside. So there's a lot of colors actually in his fur, but he's mainly black and a brown German Shepherd. So um, yeah, it was kind of fun and interesting in doing the color matching. If you want to see the um, the color matching that I did in Photoshop and then choosing the pencils, I have real-time videos uh, for those. Now, this is Derwent Life Fast, so I pretty much use Derwent Life Fast from here on out. This is, um, I think it's cherry red, and this is, again, a base coat, and that's purple just to get the flesh color and of his skin in his ear. Like I go over this a lot with black and with um, sepia. And then there's a Mars black that Derwent Light Fast has that is a purpley black. And it's really hard to tell that it's a purpley black uh, until you maybe use some odor odorless mineral spirits with it or something like that uh, but to lighten it up or add white then you'll really see uh, the purple come out in that color. That's Mars Black from Derwent Light Fast. It's a great shading color. All the colors in Derwent Light Fast are just so amazing. They, they really are. They're, they're just different than, say, you know, the colors in Polychromos or even Caran d'Ache Luminance.
now I'm using the Derwent Lightfast. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Mars Black. And I do use Derwent Lightfast Black over that to deepen it up and get some depth. Now what I'm doing is I dipped in a little cotton in terpenoid. So not odorless mineral spirits, but terpenoid, odorless terpenoid. This is a recommendation from an artist friend of mine that uses terpenoid instead of odorless mineral spirits because he believes that odorless mineral spirits are too oily, too oily for drafting film. So I am using terpenoid for this project to see uh, the difference. And honestly, right now, I don't really see that much of a difference between the two. I think maybe. Maybe the terpenoid dries a little faster, but I am hardly using any. I am like dipping in, like I dip it in and then I blot and blot and blot on a paper towel and I even wait a couple seconds and the terpenoid uh, still breaks up the color pencil pigment that's on the drafting film. So the, so it does, you know, it, it takes a while to dry. Uh, so I, I don't notice a difference just yet, but um, I am currently, as I'm recording this, I'm about halfway through the portrait. Maybe when I uh, get more into the background and do that kind of stuff, I'll notice a bigger difference. I should do a video on comparing the two. That's a great idea. Now I'm going in with purple. And I am experimenting a little bit. I do have, of course, my scratch piece of drafting film. But when I play around with my scratch piece of drafting film, I'm mixing the colors together. And I'm getting a certain color when I mix, mix the um, purple, the Mars violet. And there's an ocean blue that actually was really nice. It kind of cut the two together or really cut the um the red the violet and it accentuated the black so that that's later that's something to, i'm doing later now i'm grabbing my q-tip again now you can see right there that i use there's way too much of the thinner on my q-tip where it's just basically picking up the pigment right off of the drafting film so i'm I'm um, really super light touch. I'm blotting on my paper towel. Now here's the best thing about using drafting film is erasing, yay. I do have a white sheet of paper. It's actually Bristol drawing paper and just pure white. And what I, what I did was I erased, as you can see, and I'm erasing the edges here. Then I'm going over with um, some other colors in Mars Violet just to lighten and to blend everything together. But what I found works really well is blending with the Derwent Pencil Blender. So you'll see later on in the video too is when I use the um, Slice Tool. I use a slice tool to get the highlights, to get the fur effects. Then I'll use the Derwent Blender Pencil just to blend the edges so it's not such a harsh line like you see here. A little more eraser and then going in with the black. This is the Mars black. This is the second layer. So I'm pressing a little harder and just covering up and getting my, finding my lines. And um, I'm really just more concerned with finding all the shadows, the clumps of fur, all the folds in the ear. That's all I'm really focusing on right now. And I'm filling in the uh, values, the really dark areas with the black right now, with the Mars black.
Okay, doing the, in the reference photo, the sun is hitting the back of his head. Um, looks like the sun is, you know, maybe high noon, but more towards the back. So he's got this beautiful glow behind him. And uh, so I'm getting the, the yellow, the golden glow. This is yellow ochre, Derwent Light Fast, Golden Sun, Derwent Light Fast, and then like a neutral, like a cool gray right there just to kind of blend everything together. So I'm just getting the base coats in on here. I'm not doing anything very heavy. It's actually very a uh, very light touch, just getting my base layers that I want to kind of come through to shine through the fur to get that kind of glowy glistening look of the fur. That's my goal with this yellow undertone. Now I'm going to blend in a little with Mars Violet. Kind of just get the under the base coat for the top of the head there. And I've got a lot more that I do uh, later. I use a lot of black over this to get the definition and the values. Not Mars Black, but just black, black, because I did so much violet yellows underneath that I ended up doing a lot of black on top to get the um, the the shadows and the depth of the fur which I think I managed okay to do looking it's looking pretty good again I uh, have the time of this recording I've been pretty much finished this area and I'm happy with it. I'm now currently working around the mouth in the lower part, which I will upload to you very soon. This is the black that I just mentioned. I am not doing Mars black anymore. I'm going for a deeper, deeper black. And I do sharpen, get a nice fine edge for the eyes. I'm going to start really working on the eyes and get those shadows and highlights in there. Okay, a little more turpenoid here. Very, very, I mean, I hardly have any on my Q-tip there. And uh, I'm not sure I would do this pointy Q-tip again. I think if it were maybe like the last layers where I really want to get some softness on the outer edges, right? To have the fur on the outer edges. But... um. I want more of a base, smooth, all over coat. So, but again, I'm kind of experimenting and uh, 
I know I'm going to be going over this with a lot more darker colors. So I'm not too worried about it, but I am trying to get the fur kind of a fluffy look is what I was going after. And more black. The spots, his eyes are, the areas around his eyes are so dark and so black. And even um, the pictures with he's not in the sun, he is just, it's his face is really dark. Um, it's a certain breed of shepherds. They're beautiful, but they're very, very dark. So I'm trying to get that without that black without it being flat, like a flat black, right? So that's what I'm going for. And that's why I have the grays under there, the really light grays. So they do come through a little bit where I don't have the black as dark and some of the yellow is coming through underneath the black as part of the fur. So that's good. So then when the areas where I do want it really dark and black, it looks very dark and black. Okay, so now this is a Payne's Gray by Karen Dash Luminance, and I just, I love the color. It's really close to the color that I'm looking for, though it turned a little green with that yellow underneath. But because it's a wax-based pencil, you can see, and I purposely left this in the video, even though I think I erased most of it, you can see the consistency and how bunched up it gets. It's a very uneven look. So I do, I'm doing kind of what I can, and uh, I end up, like I said, I end up erasing most of it and uh, kind of starting over. In that area, I did do the terpenoid. The terpenoid helped a lot of it. I ended up taking a lot of it off. So, uh, and then after this, I just, I'm not using luminance anymore, but um, I just, I loved the color. I wanted to throw it in there and see what happens. And now we know. Okay, so while that area dries, I'm using um, cherry red, I think, that, that pink that I used in the ears, I'm using that around the eyes for the flesh color. Then I'm going over it with some black and just kind of going back and forth with some colors and getting the layers in here. And I am using some nightshade. Actually, I think that is the Derwent Nightshade which is a really pretty purpley color. But again, I'll go over it with black to cut the violet, the purple. That way it won't be such a dull black. Now going in with Mars Violet, getting some color in there. Mars Violet can look really uh, like a really pretty brown when I have all that yellow under there and the black so and the grays <laughs> so it definitely looks like a different color when it goes when it's over all these other colors so i will be um 
doing lots of layers. This is kind of a rinse and repeat. I'm using a really light touch. So I will, this is Mars Black, I'm sorry, Mars Violet. But I will, uh, I'll let you listen to some music here for a while and I'll come back for the next exciting thing.
Okay, so you can see I how I have the uh, terpenoid in a little pot there. What I'm doing here is I'm using a brush now instead of the Q-tip, and I'm I don't have much on the brush at all. I blotted it on with paper towel, and I'm using a really really light pressure just to blend the pigment, and I'm blotting it on a paper towel right now. And then I come back. Then you can see right there, oh, I picked up way too much. <laughs> so I'm going to where I know I have a lot of pigment and I can kind of play around. And it's just like painting. It's very much like painting. And all I'm doing is following my lines. You can kind of see my sketch outline there. So I'm just kind of following and putting the shadows where I think they should go. And um, again, it's just like painting. So it, I feel like this helps to speed up the process of colored pencils, which is very, you know, for me, that's why I use OMS. I went back up to this area again because this was that Caran d'Ache um, gray and it just, it wasn't looking good to, I don't know if the camera could pick it up, but it was looking very splotchy. So I'm, I'm kind of purposely just picking it all up. And I'm going to just start over, let it dry. And I'm going to use a Derwent Light Fast Payne's Gray up in that area and just kind of start over. So um, it, I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but it's not, it, it was very um, hard to explain. It just didn't model. It just didn't look good. So I picked that up with the Chirpanoid. Now I'm going in with um, some more marks of black and just getting all my lines in and where the eyes start and you can see the eyes are a little off here I did have to go back and do some with my grid I had to really line out the eyes with my grid method and slow down and take a good look because the eyes are not even one is a little higher than the other but I'm not, I'm not worried about it now because this is still the beginning stages, really. And uh, I, I know I have a lot more to go. I haven't really done the bottom of the eye area. I was just focusing on the top. And uh, go, taking a break from that area is always good. So I'm taking a break and going down to the nose. And I'm going to connect the nose and the eye area, connect all that fur. Going back to the Q-tip, enough with the brush. I went back to the Q-tip here for the black. And oh yeah, I tried the soft tool. Now this is great to do if for larger areas. I wanted a really, really smooth, soft uh, effect right here again to get that black, kind of grayish black glistening effect. So I'm kind of pushing the pigment into the drafting film with the soft tool to get almost like a blurry effect is what I was going for. Then just playing around with the Q-tip. The Q-tip is actually at the it's almost like watercolor painting where you get your brush that perfect amount of water on your brush or water on your paper i have the perfect amount of terpenoid on my q-tip right now where it's not lifting up all the pigment it's actually depositing and i can move the pigment around so you can see i'm actually getting a lot done with that perfect mixture on my q-tip <laughs> so this is uh, like a reddish brown going in now and get it do I want to get rid of that gray I want to go more of a red brown do a little black and darken up the top of his head now and get that area wrapped up and then finish up the eye area Now here is that Derwent pencil blender that I mentioned early on. This is what I'm pretty much using now to blend the pencils together and to get like a soft effect. And I can make little 
kind of wispies, like little hairs as well. And it depends on how hard you press, what angle you have it. You can get different effects and different fur effects from the, that's the Derwent Pencil Blender. I also really like it on regular paper, Bristol, um, hot press watercolor paper, but it really seems to work well to blend on drafting film. Okay, gonna be wrapping up this part of the video here. More to come. I am getting some base layers of the fur down with the yellow, yellow ochre cream, all derwent light fast. So that the nose and the mouth will be coming in the and his neck will be coming in the next video. See you soon.